This podcast is a little creepy. Let me explain. It was a normal day. I was heading out for a run. But first, I did what I always do. Whipped out my phone to find a podcast to listen to. And I came across this. You're a memory from the past. How's it going? <laughs> good to see you, buddy. It's been a long time since I've been on the show. What the f*** is this? It's always good to see you, buddy. I'm so happy you came on, man. I miss this. It's always fun. What am I hearing? This sounds like a legit sounding conversation between Joe Rogan and Steve John, who, can I remind you, has been dead since 2011. A moment of silence and reflect on what Steve meant. I've stumbled upon a 20 minute podcast covering everything from Steve's use of LSD to revolutionary products to the problems with Microsoft. It sounds real, but it's not. So, even though Apple what am I listening to? No, like There's a consistent fascination with the future of artificial intelligence. AI. 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 I know this really has the potential to transform life on Earth forever. So two things are at play here. First is the synthesized voices of both Joe Rogan and Steve Jobs that we're hearing, which comes from an AI model trained in existing samples of both their voices. And then second is the dialogue between them, generated by a large language model. In other words, all of this is possible due to big data. It's the foundation of how AI works. It's like AI's food. And as we know, data is everywhere. The next sale is a digital treasure trove charming Ellie's private data. What? Lately, we've seen everything from Keanu deepfakes to amazing AI art to auto-generated conversations and AI podcasts. So the reality is, it's no longer just on the horizon. AI is here, but there is a war brewing. Other people have serious real-world concerns about artificial intelligence. Because not everyone likes what they see. I do think that it will disrupt our culture. We're going to have labor force disruption like we've never seen before. People are scared. And maybe they should be. It seems like AI is coming for just about everything. There are other technologists who promise a better future. I think it's gigantic. Could be great. This could help people's lives. But either way, the one thing we know for sure is that just like software, AI will change every industry on the planet. Automotives, biosciences, creative fields, education, media, facts, stories, truth. It's all about to change. This is a story about what it means to live in a future where we'd rather listen to two AIs talking to each other than a human podcast because like it's more insightful. Where we listen to AI generated hit songs rather than human musicians because it sounds better. <laughs> When we'd rather hang up AI-generated art impressions on our walls because even they look better than the originals. And if this... Holy... Oh my goodness. Wow. ...is where we are right now, what's next? This is a classic exponential technology curve. AI has been on this curve for the past few decades. And the reason everything feels so crazy right now is because we are currently about here. This is the inflection point where enough progress has been made that the compounding begins. We have lots of data, which then leads to more innovation and products are built on top of each other. This continues and then out pops mind-blowing consumer applications like the ones you've seen recently. A new artificial intelligence tool is taking- Like GTP3, which is an AI model that writes like a human. It's not just using a thesaurus or re-spinning words. People are literally writing their college essays with this. And then DALI, an AI model that allows anybody to create incredible incredible images from words. You have to use this stuff to really understand how amazing it can be. I've left links in the description below so you can try these out for yourself later. But this journey here happened in all the technology we use today, but we probably just didn't notice it. It's only when we zoom out can we see the arc that we're on and where a technology might go next. To take smartphones, for example. We take it for granted that nearly every person on Earth has one. Even in the poorest countries on Earth, we see people using smartphones. 2007, the first iPhone came out. 2010, the iPhone 4 released with a new innovation, the front-facing camera, which meant the very first you-know-what was taken. Selfie. 
Selfie. The Selfie. In 2011, Samsung released the Galaxy Note with a 5.3 inch display. They were laughed at and ridiculed for such a big screen. Because their competitor screens were about 3.5 inches. The critics were saying, who would need a screen that big? But meanwhile, let me remind you that today, an iPhone Pro Max screen is 6.7 inches. And from there, every year new phones came out. And smartphone adoption worldwide skyrocketed. Now, in 2022, there are more than 6.5 billion smartphones. 83% of the world has one. And by 2030, nearly every single person on the planet will have one. We end up on the steep part of the curve and things just go wild. Just like they have with the adoption of the internet. Social media, number of selfies taken. But there are repercussions from all of that growth. The good? We'll be able to communicate with satellites with emergency SOS. And the bad? We had no idea that Google was searching us. We know we're here with AI and about here with the internet. So what happens to AI between here and here? More importantly, what happens to us? For me, AGI is basically equivalent of a median human. This is Sam Altman, CEO of OpenAI. He's a technologist with quite the resume. Ex-president of Y Combinator. Investor in Airbnb, Stripe, Reddit, Pinterest, and all the other ones. Chairman of the board for Helion and Oclo, two nuclear energy companies. So OpenAI is a group that includes all these other big shots like Elon Musk, Reid Hoffman, Peter Thiel, with the mission to ensure that general artificial intelligence benefits all of humanity. In this clip, he's talking about AGI, artificial general intelligence which is the concept of one ai model being able to do everything they could like say do anything that you'd be happy with a remote co-worker doing like just behind a computer which includes like learning how to go be a doctor learning how to go be a very competent coder like there's a lot of stuff that a median human is capable of getting good at but others have doomsday definitions of agi i believe about 50 percent of jobs will be somewhat or extremely threatened by ai in the next 15 years or so but we're not there yet Currently, we have AI models that do very specific things. And OpenAI developed two of these models, GPT-3 for words and DALI-2 for images. These models are open and free to use, so now all of these indie developers can build on top of them. But it's not just OpenAI. All the big tech companies are working on this. Meta recently released its own text-to-video tool. So it looks like it's got a long way to go, but AI tools get more advanced really fast. Investor and scientist David Friedberg describes what might happen next for humans. This shift from being creators to narrators. The role of the human, I think, transitions to being one of a narrator, where instead of having to create the blueprint for a house, you narrate the house you want. Wait, wait, hold on a minute. This is painting a picture here. So what you're telling me is that in a future, not so far from now, all I have to do is sit there in my office, feet up on the table, spouting random ideas and insights at my computer. All right, computer, make me some art. And then my AI assistant gets to work making the best, most insightful and beautiful books, art, movies, podcasts, YouTube videos imaginable. And then I just go ahead and sign my name to it as the author or the artist, host or director. I think that AI allows us to transition into an era that we never really thought possible or realized where the limits are really our imagination of what we can do with the world around us. This is where we're heading. Th this AI art thing, it's kind of pretty awful. You start losing track of what are they doing? They're not people. We need to get the AI to kill itself. <laughs> yeah. Some creators, artists and writers and creatives are not happy about what they're seeing, but mostly it's this. Pretty damn scary. New technology frightens us. It always has. Oh, this is bad. This is very, very bad. We fear the unknown because we don't know what's going to happen next. We fear for our financial security, our livelihoods. We worry about our world and what a dystopian future might look like. Like it or not, AI is in our future. It will touch every single job, from self-driving cars, to biological breakthroughs, to creative work, to research. We need to transform our fear into curiosity. Instead of being angry or offended, be curious. And the way to do that is to actually go and use these tools for yourself. I put links in the description so you can try them out. Like barely.ai, which summarizes essays for you and even produces counter arguments. Or avatarai.me, which gives you these epic AI profile pictures. I stumbled across these online. Now this isn't sponsored or anything, it's just interesting. So that's your homework. You need to experience what it feels like to use this. Because if you can't beat them, join them. Go and discover your new AI superpowers.